From New Radio Sports Network, I'm Gary Barta. Joined alongside me is the Packerland Conference leader in scoring and fourth in the state, Drew Doust. Drew, thanks for coming on here today. Absolutely. So it's cool to see, because I was at the game on Friday against Gibraltar, that Alex Doust, your brother, on the bench as the coaching staff. I know he was on the staff last year. So how much fun and how is it having your brother Alex as your coach? It's awesome. He pushes me to be my best every single day, every game. I mean, he's going to yell at me sometimes, but it, it's worth it in the end. We talk after the game, after every game, and he knows it's all out of love. How much of your game have you modeled after your brothers Kyle and Alex? Obviously, Kyle was a sharp shooter, probably one of the best all-time three-point shooters in the conference. And Alex, he was able to get to the rim and get to the line, and that's what you both do well. Mm-hmm. Well, growing up with both of them, you, you get the best of both worlds. And so I modeled my game after Alex, Alex's finishing and Kyle's shooting and just combined all together. And that is shown, obviously, with this season, averaging 31.5 points per game. Like I said, fourth in the state, first in the Packerland Conference. What can you attribute your big scoring jump to? I would say just coaches put me in the right spots, uh, pl- uh, teammates, teammates feeding me the ball, trusting me, and my work in the offseason. I put in a lot of work to get where I am right now. With a lot of with a lot of scoring and all the uh, potential you have, you're, you're going to get a lot of media attention. Do you pay attention to that at all? Obviously, you're able, you're able to come on here. So you do a little bit, but how much is it more focusing on the game than the actual stat line or the media attention? It's hard because you hear your name a lot, but you have to try to stay focused and not let – that kind of stuff, because there can be good and there can be bad, and you don't want to let that drain you. You want to stay even and not let that kind of stuff get to you. But obviously you see it sometimes, and it is what it is. Now talk to me about your teammates, Jared Hockey, Taylor Schaefer, even some of the bench guys, Matthew Mulvitz. How how much have they stepped up this season, especially on the defensive end, how aggressive you guys were in the Friday win over Gibraltar? Uh, Those guys do an amazing job. Jared grabs a ton of rebounds. Taylor's very physical, usually guards one of their best players. Uh, Matthew, he goes in there, plays really good defense, plays hard. So all those guys play hard, and they they open a lot of things up offensively also. Now, we're going to get a little bit off of the uh, usual track here. Would you rather hit a buzzer beater in front of the home crowd and a potential for a court storming? Or silence the away fans. I would want to silence the away fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, f- I feel like if if I'm in that shoes, obviously I'm not. I feel the potential for a court storm is is nice, but I agree with you. Silencing the away fans who came out, most of them are mm-hmm. in like a bunch. A lot of the times it's like some really weird yeah. uh, dress-up nights. Mm-hmm. I know one time you guys were playing, I don't know who it was, but they had like a, a farm out, so people were out mm-hmm. in like cow <laughs> costumes and stuff like that. Yeah. So it would be pretty cool to see the ability to just get them home sad. Yep. You're on pace to finish with over a 1,000 points in just your sophomore year. We've talked about this before mm-hmm. um, with potentially a February 3rd date against Sevastopol being that chance, but I mean... We talked about that when you were at 25 points per game. Now you're at 30, Mm -hmm. so it might be a little bit before that. What does that mean to you to be – most people are happy with 1,000 points their senior year. You're going to have two years after that to potentially become one of the best players in the state. That means a lot. I mean, it's crazy to think about, but like I said before, you can't really focus on that. You can't – because you don't know how these next games are going to go on. It's it's about staying healthy and getting wins, and that will come with that. Now, obviously, you guys lost the seven-peat streak that you have going on. How much would it mean, and just is the Packerland Conference Championship just the goal this season, or is there more behind that? There's way more behind that. Obviously, we lost that last year, but we know we have bigger goals in in mind. And after losing seven-peat, I talked to my brother right after. I was like, all right, now I got to go create our own streak, and we got to start one now. Now, you guys have a pretty big stretch of games coming up here with just this week alone. Uh, first place Kiwani and third place NEW Lutheran. Both of those teams show many different problems with Kiwani. We talked about before the interview. Their press is a really, really scary thing for I don't want to say younger teams because you have a you have an older senior led team with Hockey Peterson and Schaefer. But anybody who goes their way, their press is going to throw you problems. And NEW Lutheran, they're a double headed monster of Elijah Meerstein and Tristan Lynch. So going into this week. I don't want to say how do you see it shaping out because obviously you play the game because you never know how it's going to go. But just talk to me about how big of a stretch the final week of the first half of the season is going to go. It's huge. I mean, 
these games are so important and we're just trying to come to practice every day, stay focused and take it one game at a time. We can't worry about what NEW is doing right now. We need to focus on tonight's matchup. From New Raiders Sports Network, I'm Gary Barter. Drew Douse, thank you for joining me. Thank you.